guys, Scott Whitley here, hope you're doing well. Today I've got in my hands this absolutely stunning Emerald Burst uh, Chinese CHB1 base. And I'm going to talk a lot more about that in just a minute. Uh, before I do, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on um, how I ended up with this, this Chinese base. At first I remember seeing um, adverts popping up on Facebook for, um, for this you know, Chinese base and uh, the, the name intrigued me to start with. Uh, so I clicked on, on, on the link and, and went to the Facebook page and um, I think it was a kind of like uh, yellow, kind of more like yellow sunburst um, one that I first saw and it really, really caught my eye. I mean, there was a couple of reasons for that. One is uh, my main gig at the minute is, is playing with the animals and, um, you know, that to get that kind of Chaz Chandler tone, really, uh, it helps to have a semi-acoustic bass and... Um, I've been without one for a while and, and they, they look good, they look like the right class price. I like the fact that they were a little different um, to, uh, to, to the regular Epiphone and Gibson things. Um, and so I thought, yeah, I'll, pr I'll probably plumb for one of those down the line, you know. Um, but anyway, um, it, it was really good watching the, the kind of developments on, on uh, Stephen Chan, he's the guy behind the company, on his Facebook page. Um, you know, and, and seeing like the spec of the instruments was, was pretty knockout, you know, ebony fingerboard and, and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, he had these really beautiful um, truss rod covers made. And, um, and then there were things, and I don't know if this is an ongoing thing, but at, at the minute the first batches came with some really, really beautiful uh, plectrums and uh, your usual thing. There's a, a lead and a, a, an Allen key that came with the, the bass. So really cool. Um, anyway, he got his first uh, his first batch produced. Okay, they arrived, and there were just like two or three that were that were spare to buy. The rest had all been pre-ordered. Um, so I snapped this this uh, Emerald Burst one up uh, straight away, and uh, really really glad I did. Um, so the base arrived on like the Wednesday of that week. Uh, took it out of the box. Uh, I just couldn't believe it because it played really really nice it was set up beautifully straight out of the box and in my experience that almost never happens uh, and certainly not at an instrument you know at this price you know um uh, there were one of the things that, uh, as well that blew me away and this is really uncommon there were there were no proud or or low frets all the fret were all the way up the neck absolutely perfect uh, and the only thing that i did just a personal thing i just lowered the nut a fraction on on each of the strings you know it wasn't um, like extremely high or anything, but just personally, I like it quite low than up, you know. Um, so that was it. It played great. Plugged it in, checked it was all working. Set the intonation, which is an absolute breeze with a, a floating uh, bridge because you just kind of slide the whole thing. Um, and yeah, like I say, put the flat one strings on, put it in the flight case, and the very next day I took it to Sweden. Um, and, and used it on its first gig out there with the animals and it, it just sounded absolutely knockout. Everyone was blown away with it, both tonally and, and the look of it. Uh, and then we flew back the, the day after that, had a big gig down in, uh, it was a concert at the Kings and Squeeze was on, Howard Jones, um, a few other bands and, and, and us. Uh, and again, everyone was absolutely knocked out with it, you know, really well, were. So so here it is, let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, the construction of it. It's, as far as I know, a maple body and a maple neck, which is really good because maple's quite a bright sort of wood. So although it's, it's this kind of semi-hollow construction, um, it's got that woody thing going on, but it's also got plenty of brightness. So it's, um, you've got a um, you know, good variation of tones available with it. It's got, um, as I say, an ebony fingerboard, um, mother of pearl inlays. Um, it's got like really, really high quality tuners. Um, Fantastic, you know, heavy kind of high quality chrome tailpiece there, floating Hofner style bridge, Artec pickups, which sound great, and I will talk more about those in just a second. Volume, volume, tone, tone, and three way pickup selector. So, going back to the pickups, okay, so this bass is obviously clearly, you know, kind of modelled on uh, the Epiphone Rivoli sort of thing, the, the Gibson EB2, I think it was, the, the Gibson version of it. Um, and while those are absolutely beautiful basses, um, and it's what Chaz used, you know, so you can get, you know, you, obviously it would be the ultimate choice for getting that Chaz tone. But it's a kind of a bit, to, to, to my ears, a bit of a one trick pony is the Epiphone. Um, and it's just my opinion. 
The thing is with this base, um, unlike the, the Gibson that has that kind of mud bucket thing going on, which is very, very, very dark, um, you can get that with this by rolling the tone off. But if you if you bring the tone uh, back up, you've got a whole bunch of other usable sounds. Okay, so let me just kind of demo that for you. So uh, let's go ahead and, and let me show you that kind of Chaz tone. Okay, that sort of... Uh You know, it's really, really 60s. So that's these, just this pickup soloed uh, with the tone rolled off quite a bit. Okay, not all the way, it can go darker than that. Here we go. You know, so it's really, really cool at that. Bit more tone in. Very, very 60s kind of sound. Um, and it also works really, really nice with the fingers. I'll bring the tone back up uh, for a really kind of blues kind of vibe. kind of a ooey kind of quality you know um so moving on to the uh the, the middle uh setting so both pickups on here's where the this this pickup combination really uh comes into its own again going back to the kind of you know the gibson model and the um you know that that sort of thing um the two pickup versions to my ears they're always really really unmatched you know the 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 bridge pickup was very, very bright and very near the bridge. And you know, the, the, the neck pickup was like really, really dark. And they were just too kind of contrasting. Whereas these are in much more sensible positions uh, and, they, and they match really well. So, or so, should I say the bridge is in a much more sensible position to me. So check this out. This is both pickups on. It's got a really funky kind of tone. <laughs> that with a pick and here we go if I can find one so don't forget I've got flat wounds on this if you have brown wounds on you you're gonna get a much brighter kind of tone okay uh, but like I said there's still plenty of brightness in that so moving on to the, oh, actually before, before I do move on. Um, you know, it slaps really well as well, which is, is, is unusual for a, a semi-acoustic bass. So here's the, um, here's the bridge pickup soloed. So there you go, if you're in the market for a really, really good quality semi-acoustic bass guitar, uh, I can't recommend these highly enough, they're absolutely superb. Uh, if this thing costs 1500 pounds, two grand, um, you wouldn't question it, you know, it really, really is that level of quality, you know. And as I said before, compared to the kind of vintage uh, Rivoli's and things like that, it's, it's a much more in the real world, you know, usable bass, I would say. Um, you, you pretty much be able to turn up at any style of gig uh, and get the tone you need from this bass. So, hope you enjoyed that, and if you've got any questions on anything bass related, give me um, a shout on scott at scott-whitley.com, or hop over to the website, you can subscribe there and uh, get up to the minute um, updates on my videos and stuff, that's at www.scott-whitley.com, and I'll see you in the next video, cheers.